we going to worry about AI bots driving your car? And are you worried about someone taking over the car and, you know, and crashing the AI driven car? Or next time you go into New York City or wherever you go and you call an Uber, does it occur to you that no matter how well you eat, how well you drink, how well you live your life, how careful you are, how good a shape you're in, that the random person that picked you up in the Uber in two seconds can drive you off the bridge and kill you with no chance to appeal, right? MicroStrategy creator and executive chairman Michael Saylor is familiar with revolutionary technology and their huge prospects for early investors. He made his mark in investment, but many Bitcoin investors only know him for his strong views on the major cryptocurrency. Saylor was selected High Tech Entrepreneur of the Year by KPMG Washington in 1996, Ernst Young in 1997, and Red Herring in 1998. The MicroStrategy executive chairman interviewed David Lin about AI. Despite supporting Bitcoin, Saylor sees AI as the biggest opportunity for entrepreneurs, comparing its exponential growth to mobile phones and the internet and highlighting the significance of coming early to capitalize on its wealth-generating potential. Builders and smart investors in a recent interview with Graham Stefan and Jack Selby, Saylor reiterates the huge prospects artificial intelligence offers and how it will change our world in the next years. Saylor argues AI is the next big thing and investors have a tiny opportunity to get in early before everything changes. Great science fiction writers you know, were inspirations. Uh, you know, Heinlein in particular, not only is he a good science fiction writer and he tells a good story, but he's also libertarian. He's also a sound money advocate. So his his writings are laced with, with uh, you know, econ conservative economics, practical, practical observations about politics, you know, so, so and, and uh, inspirational stories of of improving humanity with technology. I think that's a very important formative experience. You know, Reagan, Thatcher, they were very the very successful uh, politicians in their day, and they both preached limited government, right? Uh, power to the people. Ayn Rand and and uh, her her books, Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead very inspirational science historians you know and the you know the historians alvin toffler you know the people are mega trends future shock all those books that were you know how is the world going to uh, going to turn upside down i thought that was very inter very interesting inspirational and i think um you know arthur c clark's got a phrase a very famous statement i put it on the back cover of my ipo prospectus in 1998 when the company came public that's how important the phrase was and his phrase was any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic right and that and that was the mantra of the great science fiction writers where it blends with fantasy it's like what's a magic mirror well you know, I look in the mirror and I talk and then somebody talks back. Well, now you take, uh, you know, a, an iPad or you take an Apple computer and you look at it and you zoom to someone in Singapore and you talk and they talk back and that's getting pretty magical. But then at the point where they take your photo and they plug you into an AI and they bring you to life and they put you into the into cyberspace and i'm talking to an ai that's mm. talking back to me with your gestures am i talking to a demon a witch mm. a demigod a person you know what where did the science stop where did the fantasy begin and and uh, that inspired me to start microstrategy and our idea was intelligence everywhere let's let's make everybody super intelligent like, uh, think about what some of these AIs can do today. You you can basically ask the thing to scan the the body, the entire body of human writing. Mm -hmm. You know, give me a Shakespearean sonnet, you know, but and in the style of Eminem, and in a hundred milliseconds or five hundred milliseconds, it comes back. You know, critics of artificial intelligence often raise concerns about data privacy, algorithm bias, and the misuse of AI technologies. Popular investigative journalist Whitney Webb has repeatedly warned that AI will be used to police every piece of content we read, write, and engage with online to ostracize and punish non-mainstream groups. There are also concerns that AI could take over human occupations and render humans useless. 
but experts say some jobs will be affected but many new opportunities will be created as we navigate this new environment. Saylor warned on Twitter in January that there is no risk-free way to double your Bitcoin in MicroStrategy doesn't give Bitcoin to those who scan a barcode. My staff removes 80 bogus AI-generated YouTube videos daily, yet criminals keep launching new. Verified during the talk with Stefan and Selby Saylor reveals that AI will substantially cut accident rates and enhance life expectancy. Did Decent. you pray to your patron saint or your AI and your, your demon you or should've. your angel in <laughs> cyberspace for the answer? You, well, yeah. you kind of did, yeah. right? You actually, it's, I asked a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, I asked God <laughs> to guide me. In, in fantasy novels, God's, God becomes God's. Mm. I asked the God of, uh, of, of my podcast to guide me, and this is what they said, mm -hmm. right? And, and so where does, where does fantasy, where does science end? I think, I think it is extraordinary inspirational because it starts, it, it opens up your mind, right? It's like, what happens if I dematerialize every book that's, uh, that's ever been written and I can put it on an iPad. Okay, well, I just gave 100 million books to 8 billion people for a nickel. Okay, well, that's interesting. That, that's not linear thinking, that, but that's like sec second order thinking. Third order thinking is, okay, let's just dematerialize every book and then let's read every book and let's give you, you know, the equivalent of a professor that's read every book and you can ask, the professor anything you know and the first order is hey do i can you just give me enough money to print a bunch of books and give you a big library but you know printing the books is fiendishly expensive for the civilization giving you know making you read them is double fiendishly expensive so what if the computer printed them the computer read them and uh, you know at some point you know the fourth order is Hey, why don't you just read every book, look over my shoulder, think about what I ought to do and just do it. Is uh, okay. Are we going to worry about AI bots driving your car? And are you worried about someone taking over the car and you know and crashing the AI driven car? Or next time you go into New York City or wherever you go and you call an Uber, does it occur to you that no matter how well you eat, how well you drink, how well you live your life, how careful you are, how good a shape you're in, that the random person that picked you up in the Uber in two seconds can drive you off the bridge and kill you with no chance to appeal, right? Your life is basically in the hands of a random driver every time you get in a taxi cab. And you ought to be a lot more afraid of that than getting on the airplane, because at least with the airplane, there's two pilots and they, and by the way, it's, it's against professional rules and he will get fired or, or she will get fired if they drink or, and there's another person to look at them and, and assess whether they're That's sober when they walk right. on the airplane. And if they lose it or sneeze or, or have a mm -hmm. seizure, there's another person to land the plane. Now I'm going to put you back in the random Uber in a foreign country that's swerving in traffic. And okay, if you think, oh, I'm too smart because uh, I only, uh, you know, I breathalyze tests and I personality test the Uber driver when I get in the car. Maybe you think that. Has it occurred to you that the guy on the other side of, you know, of the median strip can just take a drug, drink a thing and do this? Bam. But I, but I People used to die falling off their horse a lot. You just don't read about it because we didn't take good records. And if you roll the clock back to 1950 without technology, the average life expectancy was 50. If you roll the clock back to 1770, the average life expectancy was 32. People actually walked past a swamp, got bit by a mosquito and died of, of malaria or some fever, or they just, they lived in a house that didn't have heat and they died of pneumonia and people are dying of all sorts of things before we had technology. Now, we live in the 20, you know, the early 21st century and there's a million things for you to worry about. But if if we unleash AI and the and the robots drive the cars and they fly the airplanes, it's more likely than not the case that the average number of traffic deaths fall in this in the same way that in the modern era of antibiotics and hospitals and modern dentistry you live an extra 30 years even though you're taking some kind of risk 
when you do it. Mm. Yeah, we can worry about it all. There'll be a debate. There's going to be politicians that'll say you're safer in a car driven by a person than in a car driven by a computer. That probably won't be the case, but people will believe it's the case. And, and that's above our pay grade, right? It's going to be determined, you know, regardless of what you think about it with high likelihood. Saylor said at a conference a few months ago that Bitcoin is entering a gold rush decade with institutional adoption rising and price growth exponential. The MicroStrategy executive chairman added that autonomous artificial intelligence will help this gold rush. Bitcoin will protect the internet from AI revolution exploiters. Bitcoin is needed to watermark cryptographically signed messages, documents, and content as a truth system. Saylor said during a panel discussion at the Bitcoin Atlantis conference in March that AI will drive demand for Bitcoin. If you want to create an AI version of yourself and have it live on the internet forever, you better give it some Bitcoin. If these predictions are correct, the next few years will be very exciting for investors, especially those who take advantage of the 